Hey everybody, it's Chris Guns. Welcome back to PBI Radio, and I'm about to check in with Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. He knows how to tell a good story, and I'm sure he's got plenty on Vernon Forrest on this third year anniversary of the death of Vernon Forrest. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, it's been three years since the death of Vernon Forrest. When did you first meet Vernon? I met Vernon when I first came to Vegas. When I first moved to Vegas, back in 1980, you know, he was just turning pro. He had a, you know, career as a professional, was uh, young. And uh, Vernon was a type of guy that, uh, you know, you couldn't do nothing and help but like, like Vernon. Real cool, real friendly. Mm -hmm. He was the type of guy that would give you the shirt off his back. Just a real friendly type guy. And and, and, uh, and about his ability, I mean, when you saw Vernon, if you knew anything about boxing, he had superstardom written all over him. Yeah, he did. Yep. Incredible amateur, too. Oh, uh, without a doubt. I mean, be shame <clears throat> and uh, most of the amateurs. Mm-hmm. You know, Vernon was a, a unique <clears throat> type guy, tall, lanky. He had that good leverage and punch with either hand. Mm -hmm. He was just a, a real cool guy. Yeah, beautiful jab. Every, everything you want in a fighter. Yeah. He's everything you want in a fighter. What's your what's your favorite what's your favorite memory of Vernon and the one thing that that stands out most when you think about him? Man, I seen when he hit Shane Mosley. I think in their first fight, he hit Shane with a right hand bomb, yeah. and it it froze Shane. It just froze him. He was like, and then he knocked him out. And he won't go back up. Yeah, <laughs> I never forgot that man. I mean, I I never seen that before. And I think it reminded me of when, when Frazier hit Ali with that left hook, and Ali fell and. Yeah. It, I think the the hit in his head on the floor woke him up. You know. I mean, I, he hit Shane, and Shane was out on his feet. Yeah, yeah. But Jordan threw it in the combination that the second punch woke Shane back up. Mm-hmm. It's an awesome. Yeah, I never forgot that punch, man. And then you, how, how'd you hear about his passing? Well, oh, man, how did I hear about Jordan's passing? It was like everybody else, you know. You know, we went to the gym the next day, and everybody's talking about, did you hear about Vernon? You know, and I had spoke to Vernon maybe like a month before that. You know, a month before that, because he was, I think he was in doing rehabilitation. He had an injury. He was out for a minute. Mm -hmm. He was starting to get his career back on track. <clears throat> and then uh, he, I think he hooked up with Al Heyman, and uh, he started to bring his career back on track. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, you hear this, you know, guys uh, robbing him, took his watch, and, you know, it's crazy. I mean, listen, if you can't live in your own neighborhood, I mean, where could you live at? Yeah, yeah. And what was your last conversation with Vernon like? What would you talk about? Well, we just talked about life in general, <clears throat> you know, and, you know, like I said, I, was, I always admired Vernon's skills. He would remind me of, like, a Bob Foster and a Tommy Hearns because he had that leverage. And he was he was good with his with his skills. You know, he knew how to use what God gave him, mm -hmm. and he used it to his advantage. And plus, Bernie was a a people person. He had a couple of charities back home that he was involved in, mm -hmm. working with underprivileged kids, and you know, I think he worked with some uh, mental retarded kids. Yep. The great guy. He was just an out and out great guy. Yep. And the sports, we all miss him. The sports better off that we had him, and better off that we had that we have you too. Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate it. Thanks.